With the release of Blender 3.3, a new type of object was added called hair curves, which is meant to be used as a way to create and modify, well, hair. It's a much better option for creating hair and fur than the previous method, which was to use Blender's particle system. And the dedicated hair sculpting mode really makes it super easy to work with. The biggest positive about the new hair system, in my opinion though, is the fact that it can be used with geometry nodes completely procedurally, which has led to some really cool new ways to create stylized hair for example. However, in this video, we will use the hair system for something else, namely precision scattering, scaling and alignment of objects. Before the hair system, the main ways of scattering things with geometry nodes were to either use the distribute points on faces node, or to use the actual vertices of whatever mesh you were scattering on. The distribute points method also allows for some fine tuning, with the use of vertex groups since Blender 3.2, with the introduction of named attributes. This makes it possible to use weight painting to paint a density map, which can then be accessed as a named attribute in a node tree. However, the precision of the weight map is dependent on the vertex density of the actual mesh, which can be an issue sometimes. The weight map can also be used to scale the scattered objects. However, if you want to control that separately, you need a separate vertex group and weight map. By using the hair system, however, we don't have to worry about vertex density, vertex groups, or weight painting, because the tools in the hair system allows us to control things like scale, position, and alignment without any of that. Instead, the only thing we need is a mesh with a UV map. So, how do we use this new hair system to scatter things? Well, it's actually pretty easy to set up. First, select whatever object you want to scatter on, then press Shift A to open the Add menu, and under Curves, you will find something called Empty Hair. This will add a new Empty Hair object, which is automatically parented to the object that you had selected. And in the Hair properties of the Hair object, your selected object has also been set as the surface, which should be used to scatter hair curves on. So to start scattering, select the Hair object, and change from Object Mode to sculpting mode. You can access this pie menu by pressing Ctrl and Tab, which will show you which modes a selected object has access to. In sculpting mode, you can use the add brush to add hair curves, either individually by setting the count to 1, or in clumps by increasing the count value. And just like in regular sculpting mode, you can change the brush size by pressing F. Also, I will set the length to 1 meter, and the points to 3, here in the curve shape settings. So with that, I will scatter one hair on Suzanne, so that I have something to work with. In the modifiers tab, you will notice that there is a geometry nodes modifier already added to the hair object, and if we look inside it, there is just one node called Deform Curves on Surface, which is used to automatically update the hair positions in case the surface geometry is displaced with a Displace modifier for example. We could use this modifier of course, but for clarity's sake, I will add a new one so we have a clean slate to work on. Alright, let's instance some objects. Add an instance on Points node, and a cube from the mesh primitives and connect the cube to the instance input. As you can see, we now have three instantiated cubes on every hair curve, and the reason for this is that we set the amount of points on the hair curves to three, earlier in the curve shape settings. This can be set to whatever you want of course, but for our purposes, it's better to keep it low. So to instantiate only one object per curve, we will isolate just one of the points and use that point for instancing. And luckily, there is an easy way to do this. Just add an endpoint selection node Set the start size to 1, and end size to 0, and connect it to the selection input of the instance on points node. So, now that we have a way to instantiate a single object per curve, we can start making adjustments to the instantiated object. The first adjustment I will make is to align the instantiated objects along the curves. Once again there is an easy way to do this by using the built-in curve nodes. First I will resample the curve with a resample curve node, and a count of 2. This essentially removes any points between the first and last point of the curve, which turns it into a straight line, even if it has been modified with the comb brush for example. Next, 
add an align Euler to the vector node and a curved tangent node. Connect the tangent output to the vector input of the align node. Set the axis to C, then connect the rotation output to the rotation input of the instance on points node. This aligns the instantiated object to the curves, which by default is aligned to the surface normals. But you can adjust that alignment by modifying the curves with the hair tools, for example by combing them like this. The second adjustment I will make is to make the instance object scale controllable with the hair tools as well. To do this, add a capture attribute node and a spline length node. Connect the length output to the value input and change from point to spline. Then connect the attribute output to the scale input of the instance on points node. The reason for capturing the attribute before the resample curve node is that once we resample it, the actual length of the curve might change, depending on the shape of the curve. So doing this allows us to essentially save the original length, which we can then use as the object scale. So now you can change the size of the instantiated objects by using the Grow Shrink tool in the hair sculpting mode. Apart from these fine controls, it might be nice to add a slight amount of randomness to both scale and rotation, so let's do that too. Add a Rotate Instances node, and a Random Value node. Change it from Float to Vector, set the min values to negative 1, then connect it to the rotation input. Next, add a scale instances node and another random value node. Set the min value to 0 0.5, then connect it to the scale input. Another useful adjustment if you want to use several hair systems with different objects is to replace the cube with an object info node. By connecting the orange object input to the group input, we can select an object in the scene to be instantiated for that specific hair system, which means that we can reuse the same node tree for different objects. Or if you want to use several objects for one hair system, you can replace the object info node with the collection info node instead. Just make sure that you enable pick instance in that case, so that only one object gets instantiated on each point. And that's basically it though there are some modifications we can do to make it more flexible. For example, at the moment, we are applying a random rotation on all axes at the same time. However, there might be cases where you want to control the C rotation separately from the X and Y rotation. So to do this, start off by setting the X and Y values of the random value node to zero. Then add a vector math node set to scale after the random value node. Now we can control the influence of the random C rotation with the scale value. Next, add another rotate instances node, another random value node set to vector, and another vector math node set to scale. And this time set the C values to 0, and the respective X and Y values to negative 1 and 1.
To make these values controllable in the modifiers tab, connect the scale values to the group input. Open the properties panel by pressing N and rename the inputs to C rotation and XY rotation. Let's also make the scale randomness controllable in a modifier. First, add a math node set to subtract and set the top value to 1. Then connect the bottom value to the group input. Rename it to scale randomness. And finally, connect the subtract node to the min input of the random value node. With this setup, you can now easily add precise scattering of whatever object you want, while also being able to control scale and alignment along the surface by using the hair tools. Definitely a step up from using the previous methods if you ask me. So I hope you found this video helpful, and that you learned something new. See you next time.